there's a growing, bloated creature seeping across the nation and leaving its putrid insides behind to rot in a wake of devastation. It's awful. It's wild. It's coming to get you. It's... it's garbage? Canadians are full of it. The latest survey of the waste management industry reports that Canadian households and businesses are creating more than 33 million tons of solid waste, with over 25 million tons being trashed in landfills and incinerators. At least 70% of the waste that's scrapped to landfill sites can be reused and recycled. And that's pretty messed up. So how can Canadians undo the damage done? Well, that's a whole new can of worms. Vermicompost, or worm compost, is nature's own remedy for waste and is the breakdown of organic matter by worms. Worms are the good kind of litter bug. Today I'm speaking with Travis Ahern from the biggest working uh, group here with Sustainable Concordia on campus. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about worm composting today. So, hey Travis, thanks for speaking with us. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about vermicomposting. Well, vermicomposting um, is a bit of a... Um a mystery to some people. Uh, we, it's a good way for people in cities to manage their waste. It also gives a really good quality compost. So some people do compost outside, but worm composting is uh, better quality. It's, uh, it's basically worm poo. We call it vermicom, <laughs> uh, vermicast. Vermicast. And um, when it, it naturally has fertilizers um, and microorganisms that are beneficial to plants. So when we use it with our plants, they, they, they really like it. <laughs> so it, it's just like the natural feedback system that happens in nature, basically. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And it's also a good way of managing our waste output in terms of compostable waste and, and as, as an individual. How long have you been composting with worms? With worms, just uh, past few months. I've been the compost education project coordinator since October. And, uh, but I have compost outside. So it took me a while to have the, uh, take the initiative to actually have a vermicomposter composter myself. And I have noticed that it's, uh, it's like having a pet, because the goal with vermicomposting as well, in terms of feeding, etc., is you're trying to create an environment where they're happy. Mm -hmm. So then they'll uh, work for you. <laughs> so worms make a pet. I, I think so. I talked to them anyway. <laughs> so you brought uh, a sample of one of your own compost. Can we take a look at it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> these are the ones that these bins that we make at in the greenhouse at Concordia. So you made this yourself, your own bin? Yes. Can at you the top of um, the hall building? Okay. Can you maybe just talk a little bit about the steps to making this kind of bin for people sure. who might be interested? Well, these bins the, that we use are uh, opaque and non-toxic, and these particular ones are made in Canada as well. And uh, opaque because worms don't like light. So we try and keep them in a dark spot as well. Mm -hmm. um, we also drill holes so on the top of the, the uh, lid here. We put aeration holes on the lid and at the bottom of the bin as well. So they can breathe. Exactly. But so they don't escape, we put uh, geotextile, which can be found at any uh, hardware store. And uh, that allows air, uh, the uh, uh, moisture to escape, but also for the uh, moisture to stay in too, it, 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 it's a good balance. Okay. And then at the bottom we have um, a bag of gravel that we put in, in a geotextile bag as well. Okay. And that allows more aeration and space for the any leachate, so that's the liquid that goes through to, to go. So but if you're re not, not overfeeding, there's not that much liquid to worry about. Okay, so you can buy um, uh, composting bins you know, online or in other different, I guess, outlets, but you can also recycle some of your own at home, I guess, housewares to make your own bin. Exactly. Um, it's usually at this time of year, especially in July, we'll see lots of garbage on yeah, our streets. Yeah, on the side of the road. And I know we can uh, use, I've heard people, about people using uh, their dresser drawers as compost bins. So you can make your own compost bin, make it attractive to... <laughs> nice, decorate it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a look about what's in here. What, what kinds of material can you put into a compost? Well, again, you're trying to make your worms happy, so you want to feed them well. You want uh, a mix of what we have, nitrogen-rich food and carbon-rich food. 
Okay. And so um, basically you're putting your kitchen veg kitchen waste, yes. fruits and vegetable waste, and mm -hmm. you're cutting it up as much as possible because they don't like fresh material, but they don't like rotting material either. So mm -hmm. anything that's two to three days old will be soft enough for them to actually take a chunk off of. Okay. So the smaller it's cut up, the faster it will be eaten. Um, carbon rich, uh, we're also talking about for nitrogen uh, coffee grinds as well. Coffee okay. grinds, tea bags, tea. So, um, but you don't want it to be too acidic, so you can also put eggshells, so that makes it a less acidic environment. And you can also put um, car bi not bicarbonate, but uh, it's like baking soda. Okay. To make it that we can get a garden store. To make it more basic. To make it more basic as okay. well. Okay. So I see you've got some. Can we take a little dig around? Yeah. <laughs> so I see some an apple core there. Mm. But I'm going to search for some. <clears throat> for some worms. Some worms. Digging for worms. So what kinds of worms can uh, people use? So we have there is some. Ah. So they come in different colors. Sometimes it's maturity. But uh, they're so little. Yeah, they're a little tinier than our native worms. These ones are called Isenia photida, which are red wigglers. Red wigglers. Commonly named. And um, they're actually a little more social than our native worms, too. So they like small, they can live together <laughs> and okay. actually cuddle together a lot more uh, readily within a, a bin. They also eat a lot more than our native worms. Okay. So they are actually from the tropics. Um, in Canada, uh, we don't necessarily want to leave these out in nature, even though here they would probably freeze to death. Okay. Because they don't have the, the tendency Canadian to dig down yet. Yeah, soil and <laughs> cold conditions. So we don't. But uh, yeah, they're a little more social. They like, they don't mind being in with others and they eat more. Okay. So how many worms should somebody um, start off with, like in terms of weight or numbers? Well, it depends on how much you'd like cool. to um, get rid of. Uh, in terms of your waste. I didn't mention the carbon waste too, so you also put, you can put your indoor plant material. Uh, we can also put black and white ink newspaper. So that okay. adds the carbon content and the bedding for a place for them to go in a less acidic environment too. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm forgetting your question. <laughs> oh, I was talking about worms and mm -hmm. um, how many people how many people should take them, and also oh, where the they can where they can get worms as well. Okay. Do they start digging in their backyard? Or well, these are special worms. Yeah. So. For instance, this is a small bin. Yeah. And uh, usually, if uh, when someone goes to buy a bin from us, we ask well, how many people do you live with, and if they're just alone, we'll suggest this small bin. Um, and we put 250 grams of worms, which represents about half a yogurt container. And again, uh, well, worms do procreate too. Yeah. So even if you're two people and you want just a small bin because of space considerations, um, they will procreate and create little worms. And they're hermaphrodites, so they, but they still have to get together once in a while. Yeah. That's another reason why you want to keep them happy in here, actually. So it's not expensive to, if you're, if you're taking proper care of your worms, it's not expensive for you to use this um, as a way of disposing biodegradable waste. No, it isn't. And it actually might pay for itself as well, mm -hmm. since uh, you can sell your worms back to either your neighbor or we, we buy the worms back at the greenhouse as well. Okay, how much do you sell and, re and buy worms? What's the rate that you sell the worms at? The rate, the I always forget this, this number, but it's, uh, we buy them. So we sell them. <laughs> uh, a 500 gram container is, uh, again, a yogurt container, which is $30. Okay. And a 250 gram amount is uh, $15. Okay, great. It's a good, it's a good price, because they can range anywhere from 60 to over $100 too, depending on uh, where you're getting them from. <laughs> so, it's like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cheese. <laughs>